Hi everyone, my name is Reef James and today we're going to be getting learned about what the Helium network is and how you can earn HNT, which is the cryptocurrency that you mine when you set up a Helium gateway. Okay, so I'm going to be assuming that you're in one of these three columns. A, you're interested in the tech, like the LoRaWAN tech and how uh, the network works and you know, you want a deep level of understanding. B, you're you're here for the money, right? You're, you're here just because you know a lot of people make a lot of money uh, setting up these helium miners uh, and you wanna get in on that. Uh, and C, uh, both, right? You're interested in uh, making money, of course, uh, and you're also interested in the tech and you wanna have a bit of a, a deeper understanding of how it works, right? Uh, now, if you're in it just for the money, no hate, right? That, that That's fine, um, you do you, everyone has their own interests, but if you want to set up an efficient and effective, uh, you know, productive uh, helium miner, I feel like you need to have a bit more than a very high level understanding of how it works. So by any means, like you don't need a super duper low level understanding. You don't need to know about everything um, <laughs> down to the bare bones of how the helium network runs. Uh, but I do think to set up an effective uh, and, you know, efficient uh, mining setup, you do need to have a little bit more than that rudimentary knowledge. And yeah, we're, we're gonna try to get you there with a, a video series. Okay, so from Helium's perspective, like what, what's the goal? Like what are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to set up a global LoRaWAN network to allow Internet of Things devices to talk to each other. That's basically it. All right, so Helium's building a global wireless communications network, right? But for what use? Like who's gonna be actually using it? Well, uh, a ton of different use cases, right? But the one that comes to my mind is those, you know, those little e-scooters and e-bikes that you can walk up and, and scan with the QR code and then, you know, jump off and, 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 and ride away. Well, <laughs> these companies, uh, you know, they want to know where their assets are. Uh, GPS, right? Obviously, it's GPS. That, that's, that's how you know where things are. Sure, uh, you have a GPS module on the scooter or the bike or whatever. It talks to the satellite and, well, it talks to a lot of different satellites and trilaterates, you know, the, the location of, of that uh, device. All right, well, that's only uh, useful if you're there and you can get the information locally off the device itself, right? Or it has to be sent over a network to the internet. So that could be done over a telco network or, you guessed it, right? A LoRaWAN network, like a wireless communications network. So data comes down from the satellite GPS, you get, your, you get your location of the device and then that device location sent over the LoRaWAN network or the Helium network and that's it. People can track where their assets are. Another use case that gets thrown around a lot is, uh, you know, like a dog tracker tag thing. Same deal, you've got like a little tag that sits on, on, on Scruffy's collar. It's got a GPS, gets the coordinates and then it communicates over the LoRaWAN network and then into the internet and then you have an app and you can see where Scruffy is if he's escaped, right? There's a ton of different use cases and, and these are just a couple. All right, so how does the Helium network work? Well, the Helium network is a wireless communications network built on the LoRaWAN specification. Uh, okay, what, what is the LoRaWAN specification? Well, LoRaWAN is a wireless communications network similar to your you know traditional telco network that your phone uses to make calls and and access the internet and all that kind of good stuff well is the helium network a replacement for your traditional telco networks definitely not uh it's definitely not uh and we'll do a bit of a deep dive into why in another video but for now let's jump back and kind of get a bit of a understanding of what uh, LoRaWAN actually is. The LoRaWAN specification is a low power wide area networking protocol that's used to connect battery operated things to the internet, like, you know, internet of things, things. So LoRaWAN itself literally just means long range wide area network. All right, so what is a wide area network? Well, let's understand what a uh, LAN is or a local area network, right? So your home Wi-Fi that you connect to, to to access the internet is your local area network or your LAN, right? 
Now, a wide area network is just a means of communicating uh, between multiple LANs over a long distance. In fact, the internet itself is the world's largest wide area network, or a WAN. Oh, okay, dude, we, we understand, or we, we just don't care. We, we just want to earn HNT. How do we earn HNT? How do we earn money doing this? Well, long story short is you set up a LoRaWAN gateway at your house and you, you build the network. You become part of the network, right? And you get compensated for doing that. All right, so why does Helium outsource this to, you know, us? Like, why don't they do this themselves? Like, every other wireless communications provider has done that. Why would they trust people like us to set the network up? There's a few reasons, uh, and let's do a, a little bit of a deep dive uh, into it and, and see if we can understand a little bit why. So from Helios' perspective, right, the, the biggest challenge that any wireless communications provider faces is setting up the physical infrastructure, right? Building the physical network. That's where we come in. Okay, so reason number one is site acquisition. You can't just cruise around with your hardware and put it up wherever you want, right? You, you need to either own the land or you know, negotiate with the owner of the land to lease a part of that land to set up your gear. And that doesn't even you know, account for all of the council permits and, and hurdles you need to jump through to get these permits approved, right? And <laughs> these permits change from region to region and, and from council to council. So it's a big deal, right? From, from Helium's perspective, site acquisition is a big deal. And that's on, our, that's on our shoulders, you know? That site acquisition box has been checked because, you know, we do that. That's on us. So the second reason that Helium doesn't set up the network themselves is hardware costs, right? Uh, getting the capital to buy all of the radio hardware and antennas and all of the other stuff that you need to set up the wireless transmission side of the network, it all costs money. And if Helium doesn't yet have revenue, like where does that money come from? Well, it comes from outside investors, okay? So, you know, an individual with a lot of bucks or maybe a big company with a lot, a lot of bucks comes in and goes, hey, Helium, uh, I really like what you're doing. Here's a hundred million dollars, you know, go set up a LoRaWAN network in uh, Brisbane or Sydney or Melbourne or across the whole of America, right? But when you start making money on that network, well, guess what? We're gonna come in and take a whole heap of it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, you know, this is not an economics video. We're not gonna go into uh, <laughs> any more into that kind of thing. Uh, either way, Helium hasn't done it that way. Um, so, whatever, the hardware costs, right? We're doing that, we have the capital, we buy the, the radio hardware. So that box has been checked from Helium's perspective. So the third reason that Helium doesn't set up the network themselves is kind of an extension on the second. Um, but let's think of it like this, right? You've, you've set up your Helium miner at your house and it, this is it here. Think of it top down. It's radiating uh, whatever LoRaWAN frequency you're in, uh, a few kilometers around your house or could be much more, could be much less. Whatever, this is your house, uh, this is a LoRaWAN device, and you know, they wanna be able to communicate, and they communicate through that network that you're, that you're transmitting through that frequency. Cool, right? Cool, but not that practical. So what we want is to be able to communicate from outside around the area to your home device, and then from there to the internet, right? That is what's practical. And to do that, we need to have some sort of backhaul, right? Communicating from the device to your home radio unit and then from there to the internet. And the backhaul is, well, it's your home connection, your home connection to the internet. So that backhaul checkbox has been ticked by Helium. So you can probably see that there's quite a bit that goes into setting up a large scale wireless network. And as a bit of a recap, Helium's outsourcing the site acquisition, you know, buying the hardware and, and the labor costs associated with setting it all up, as well as the ongoing backhaul costs, uh, AKA, you know, connecting our, our radio unit, our, our LoRaWAN gateway uh, to the internet. All of those boxes have been ticked off. So what does Helium do, right? We do all this, all this work, what do they actually do? 
So Helium manages the whole backend, right? They, they do all of the backend stuff. Once we have our device set up and it, it, it's powered on uh, and it has a solid internet connection, uh, it's gonna be making passive income, which, which is amazing, right? Uh, a lot of different stuff plays into it. How many other Helium miners are around you? Like how many devices can yours talk to? Uh, um, your RF chain, I guess, like how much loss you have and how high your antenna is and a whole heap of stuff plays into it, which we're going to dive into uh, in more, you know, a more granular detail in future videos. Um, but this was just kind of a bit of a, a bit of a setting the ground level, uh, setting uh, the level for a newcomer, like what is the Helium network? How does it work at a very high level? And we're going to be, you know, digging down to lower levels and giving more specific advice in future videos. Okay, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my background is is not uh, in, in Helium. I'm actually very new to Helium. Uh, I don't even own a device yet. It's it's currently being shipped. Um, but my background is in RF engineering and, and uh, networking. So I feel like I'm gonna be able to transfer a lot of my uh, industry knowledge uh, over to uh, the Helium network and, and, and people who are interested in the Helium network. A lot of the videos that I've been watching on YouTube surrounding Helium seems to be coming from, from guys who are crypto guys and, and not so much RF networking guys. So there's quite a bit of um, incorrect or, or not as correct as it could be information floating around. So I'm gonna try fill that gap a little bit. We'll see how it goes. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, like the video if I've, if I've helped you out here uh, and subscribe. <laughs> Just please subscribe. Uh, as of today, which is the 11th of uh, December 2021, I have like 50 subs. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Appreciate you.